thank you very much for inviting. Um, first, when I received the title of the presentation uh, and I was looking at the literature, uh, I didn't really find papers about how was rosacea managed during the pandemic uh, because it wasn't that major uh, problem during that time, either for doctors and also for, for patients. Uh, but then when going into more depths, then uh, basically, um, uh, what made it difficult to deal with rosacea is that patients were not coming to the clinic. So that was one thing because of the pandemic. So I was discussing the teledermatology, if rosacea is possible to diagnose by teledermatology and follow. And there are already some publications out, a few with rosacea, more with acne and other chronic uh, skin diseases that uh, teledermatology can be very useful, but not only just seeing at the photos, but for example, video calls, uh, then follow patients on different, uh, let's say, WhatsApp uh, channels uh, and also uh, to do phone calls. So I think uh, um, we already, dermatology had some experiences with teledermatology, uh, but uh, the COVID era opened up a new uh, a spectrum and a new possibility uh, and the technologies were, are more advanced, uh, applications are developed so patients can even send their photos standardized. And uh, yes, uh, including many others, rosacea can be also diagnosed uh, via teledermatology. One question remains, uh, if we can compare teledermatology with the standard care when patients are coming, uh, if they are comparable in terms of efficacy, accuracy, and that's uh, uh, missing. So we need some more studies to do that, especially in emergency situations like that. So one topic was teledermatology. The other issue which was making the diagnosis of rosacea difficult, like patients were wearing masks all the time, either in the workplace or just the general public at home. And the face, um, facial mask was there sometimes for four hours, six, eight, 12 hours. And that was really creating a lot of adverse facial skin reactions. And uh, the magnitude was uh, so large that when surveying healthcare professionals who were wearing this mask for long hours, 97% uh, complained of any uh, skin problem on the face. So that, that's really, it was also for me, let's say very, um, impressive to read these numbers, although I knew it, but the numbers were, were, were very much uh, to read. Uh, and then there were different types of this skin reaction and I was discussing those during my uh, presentation. And also different types of masks were used, the N95 respirators and the surgical mask, and, and there were different reactions uh, occurring due to that. And as the pandemic advanced uh, and we wore the mask also the general public, they weren't only at home, but they were going to work with the mask. Also, the number of facial uh, problems increased uh, in the derm consultations. There are data. Uh, we didn't publish uh, those data, but there are publications uh, out, for example, from acne patients, Italian working group. They have been following for one year the patients on visio consultations and uh, they were quite effective. And what's interesting, when the lockdown finished, 50% of the patients wanted to continue on teledermatology. Keep in mind young females who are good with technologies, but they liked it. So, um, uh, and there are also other studies according to that. So when discussing the facial dermatosis, the uh, irritative contact dermatitis was the most frequent, uh, followed by allergic contact dermatitis on the face, because now uh, my presentation was about rosacea and about the facial uh, skin problems due to these masks. And uh, also there were some cases of acne and rosacea and seborrheic dermatitis flare up. Uh, it's interesting, a new term emerged, which is called maskne. And uh, basically, this is not a new entity, I would say, but these are acne form eruptions, papules, pustules, similar to acne, which uh, arise after the wear of the mask and in the mask area. So usually, uh, and the, the, the explanation for that is that the mask is changing actually the temperature of the skin, the transepidermal water loss, the microbiome, 
there is an increased sebum production. So who already had acne, the acne can flare up due to the mask. Uh, but people who didn't have uh, uh, acne, they can also develop these lesions. And additionally, if someone puts a moisturizer on the face and then uh, puts the mask or the respirator, that even increases the likelihood of have, having these lesions. What was also relevant for the practice, uh, and I think the most interesting for me is to, to find out if someone has a rosacea flare-up or maybe an allergic contact dermatitis. And it appeared that actually every part of the mask can cause allergic dermatitis, can serve as an allergen. So the rubber, uh, the, the, the elastic bands, they contain rubber accelerators. In the textile material, there is um, polypropylene, uh, which is a chemical and it degrades to uh, formaldehyde and that causes allergic reaction. In the nose piece, there was nickel, which, were, um, uh, which haven't been in contact with the skin, but with the prolonged use and sweating, the, ion, uh, the metal ions were released and transferred to the skin. So. I think it's a quite complex uh, thing if someone comes with facial erythema who have been diagnosed before with rosacea and then uh, we need to find out if it's just a rosacea flare-up or maybe an irritant dermatitis or maybe an allergy. So I think this is uh, something new for rosacea patients uh, which was brought during this era, this, this uh, problem. Yeah, definitely teledermatology, I think, will advance more and more. And, and the pandemic gave to that really a big push, a big push. And even dermatologists who are skeptical with this uh, possibility and patients, they uh, basically had to try this because every dermatologist phone was full of photos. So friends, colleagues, patients have been sending photos. And I think as a result, there is an experience uh, and what I just reported, I think some patient population prefer this technology, so it will maybe be an option for the future to continue with that. Uh, and uh, also for some doctors, maybe they get more convinced that uh, this is a useful tool.